He created the world. He founded it upon the seas uh, and he established it upon the flats. Uh, he said, and they that do all the rain, they belong to God. Uh, that he has the whole world in his hands. Uh, we just thank God. We do not care what is happening, but we just still want to say, Father, we are grateful. We just want to take time out and say thank you. We want to say thank you. Lift up your voice. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we say thank you. And that was you. you oh God. Nyam ye gwa ma Ye yi wa ye Nyam ye gwa ma Na ye kan fu o Nyam ye gwa ma O nyam ye gwa The name of the Lord, Yami.
of the Lord. Thank him and give him all the glory. We are in the fifth month of the year 2020. Many would have said the year has not begun well for them, but we are saying, Father, do something new. When men are cast down, we shall say there is a lifting up. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. We thank you. We know that all that is happening does not seem to us. But Father, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. Lift up your voice and pray. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your family. As you are connected online, don't say you are not part of this service. Lift up your voice and pray. Thank God for your family. Pray with your family back home. Thank God for their life. Thank God for preservation. Even thank God for provision for food. For many are wallowing in hunger. But God has kept us. God has provided. God has protected us. He has shielded us. God has even saved us from more dangerous viruses and deadly things than this. But we have come to say, Father, we are grateful. We will not be like other people. We will not say thank you and be concerned about the current situation. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, we thank you for our families. We thank you for the cure. We thank you for our health. We thank you for our provisions. For you have saved us from deadly things. God delivers us. He delivers us from dangerous accidents. He has saved us. He has healed us from deadly diseases and virus. Malaria didn't kill us. Cholera didn't kill us. Diarrhea didn't kill us. And so shall COVID-19 not kill us. We say, Father, we are grateful. We say, Father, we are grateful. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we give you all the glory, we exalt you, we magnify your name, we bless your holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we lift up our voices and say we are grateful. Ah, we are not in the physical building, oh God, but we will say thank you. We will fellowship your presence. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. We are grateful for your grace and your mercy. We are grateful for your grace and mercy, sir. Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, da 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 us to pray two things then the service will fully roll on we just want to pray for all those that are watching and then we want to pray pray globally for the world that people who have been infected god shall heal them and we are praying for the deliverance of the nations of the world that god should have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus, Jesus. lift up your voice and pray. The Bible said in Exodus chapter 3, when God was speaking to Moses, he said, I have heard the cry of my people. We are lifting up a voice of a cry. We are praying that God heal us, O God. That God deliver us, O God. Save us from this deadly virus, O God. Father, families are wallowing in hunger. People are crying. There is no hope for people. We are praying for deliverance, O God. People in the hospitals, health workers, patients themselves, and everybody that is concerned about the hospital worker. Father, we pray for your healing and your intervention, O God. We pray an intervention. We pray an intervention, God. That your healing power, your healing process shall be quickened. That many shall recover from this virus. This virus shall not claim all lives, O God. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. That Father, you will deliver many, O God. You will deliver many. You will deliver many who are infected. You will deliver them that are infected. You will heal them that are sick. He said, I sent forth my word and it healed them and delivered them from their destruction. We are praying for healing and deliverance. That Father, the devil shall not champion and shall not put rally behind this and put many down. We shall not have funerals than ever, oh God. We are praying an intervention, oh God. Father, save us from this. 
that you are the only one that can save us. Uh, politicians have tried their best. They could have uh, scientists are still working. Uh, but Father, the true deliverance uh, coming from you alone. Uh, for it is you that created the world. Uh, you know what to put in the world. Uh, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, deliverance, oh God. Uh, healing, oh God. Uh, deliverance, oh God. Uh, and by extension, uh, anyone watching and is believing you for healing, uh, we pray your healing power to touch them, oh God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. In the sickness, it could be headache. Uh, aside the COVID-19 patients, uh, we pray for any other person uh, that is sick in any part of their bodies, uh, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Uh, we declare and speak healing. We speak healing uh, into the atmosphere. Uh, we prophesy healing into the atmosphere. Uh, that Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, the sick shall not die. Uh, we shall live and declare the words of the Lord. Uh, uh, the devil shall not claim the lives of the sick. Uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, uh, Mayenka Brando Sian Bahasa, Legedem Barusa Kabarada Baha, Le Branda Bose Peria Baba, Ala Palele Bose Kapalia, Indele Borodomosha, Lampala Bahasa, Re O God, Re that God shall give provision to his people, them that are hungry, them that there is no hope, pray finally that God, your provision shall come to them, those that are hungry, those that are struggling and suffering, we pray your deliverance we pray your healing we pray your provisions in the name of jesus lift your voice lift your voice lift your voice pray for the provision of them that are in lack them that need them that need god help them in this time help them in this time in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus Pray with us wherever you are. Them that are in need, them that are in lack. Father, provide. Many are losing their job. Father, save them, oh God. Help them and send help from above. In the name of Jesus, many have been thrown away from business. But Father, help them. Father, deliver them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Want to pray finally that as the service is going on whatever the lord wants to do let him do it yes. them that are in need of deliverance repentance salvation healing a change in something i know many are struggling and facing a lot of things in these times emotionally psychologically financially anything that we are praying that the service shall carry all those things from the word, from praises, whatever worship that shall go on. May deliverance and healing, whatever you are believing God and trusting God for, may this service come with that in the name of Jesus. Not the man that will bring it back. God, lift up your voice and pray last week. A change shall come to somebody. Repentance shall come to somebody. Healing shall come to somebody. Three things. Salvation shall come to somebody. Healing shall come to somebody. Deliverance. A change in mind. A change. A deliverance in something. We are praying, oh God. Ayada Rabosa. Palo Seke Barosa. La Baro Rabosa. Para la 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 la. In the name of Jesus. Kabaro Shaka Peria. Father, as they are following online. Wherever this video shall appear, we are praying that, oh God, you will help them, you will change their lives, you will save many souls through this message, through this broadcast. May people be saved, may people be delivered, may people be healed. In the name of Jesus, may signs and wonders, testimonies, are follow after this broadcast. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh. Same again. I would never return. I've closed the door. I will walk the path. I will run the race. And I will never be the same. 
there are higher heights, there are higher heights, there are deeper seas. Oh, forever to do, oh Lord, do it. The glory, the glory of God fills my life, fills my life. to just enter into a time of worship to our king this morning. We want to give him all the glory. We want to give him all the honor. We want to give him all the adoration and praise. Wherever you are, just begin to bless the name of the Lord right this moment. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. Give him all the glory. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration due him. He alone deserves it. Worship Jesus this morning. Worship Jesus this morning. Bless and exalt his name. Magnify his name. He is worthy of all our worship. He is worthy of all our adoration this morning. He is holy. He is righteous. He is mighty. Raise your voice and give him all the glory this morning. Worship him. Worship him. Worship Jesus this morning. Great and marvelous things he has done for us. Even when we didn't know him, he came to die for us. He took our place. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, what we would never do for ourselves. Give him all the glory. He alone deserves it. He loves us regardless of all our mistakes and all our flaws, all our sins that we've committed, every bad thing we've done. He still loved us anyway. He came to die for us. Worship him this morning. Give him all the glory. Exalt him in this place this morning. Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my Lord, should die for me?
Spirit of the living God, have your way. We worship you forever. Forever and ever be thou Lord. You reign supreme in our lives, O God. We say thank you, Lord, that you are good, you are merciful, you are kind, you are all in all for us, O Lord. Say thank you, Father, for every blessing that you have blessed us with. Thank you for our families, for salvation, for redemption, for sanctification, for justification. We are justified by your sacrifice. That is why we can come into your presence and bring you worship. Father, we love you. We love you. And we say thank you, Lord. Again and again and again we say Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. And the saints of God will say a big amen unto the Lord. Oh, amen unto the Lord. As we put our hands together wherever you are, listening to us, may the Lord reach you in um, heavenly places. You are sitting in heavenly places. In the presence of God with Christ Jesus. May the hand of the Lord reach you where you are. May the goodness of the Lord reach you where you are. May the love of God touch you where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. You want to thank God for yet another Sunday like this. Even though we have not gathered together, we have gathered in spirit. Wherever you are, we know that you have joined us in spirit to enjoy the presence of God. May the presence of God be with you and touch you in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is our communion service and we are believing God that as his word comes, as we share, we participate in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, Whatever the blood stands for, whatever the body stands for, God is going to touch us and make us enjoy the blessings of the body and the blood. If you believe it, say amen. I bring you greetings once again from my wife and from all the CEM pastors. We are with you. In your homes, wherever you find yourselves, we are with you, we pray for you, and we believe that the hand of God, the grace of God, the glory of God will be upon your life and cause you to enjoy life. We pray that even in these circumstances that we find ourselves, the enemy will not have the upper hand in your life. Grace will abound unto you. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you something that I've shared before, but I believe that it is appropriate for this time that we find in, and even for this service, a communion service. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, reading from verse 23 to 25, it reads, For I received from the Lord what I also passed to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus was saying that any time we share in the body and the blood, we should do it in remembrance of him. We should do it in remembrance of him. But sometimes we forget that we are supposed to remember what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. Sometimes we take the body and the blood because we have to take it. It's a ceremony in the church. 
And so we take it. But Jesus said, whenever we do this, we should do it in remembrance of him. So I ask myself, how can you remember if you don't know? How can you remember something that you don't know? You've not had any experience with whatever it is that you are supposed to remember. How can you remember? So I went to visit Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. And he said, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. So, Paul is saying that we can only remember when we know. So, this morning, I want to talk on what Paul said. That he wants to know Christ. I want to know Christ. That I may know Christ. That I may know him. That's the King James Version. That is what I want to talk on. Now, to know is to have knowledge, as I've mentioned. You must have knowledge of whatever you want to know. Without knowledge, without information, you cannot know. To know also means to understand. When you understand something, you can say that you know. And to understand something also depends on information. We are in the information age. There is so much information out there. But it is not every information that will help us to know Christ and to understand what he stands for. To know also means to be aware. To have the truth or the facts. To know also means to be well informed. If you are not informed, if you are not well instructed, you cannot know. And sometimes to know means also to be acquainted. To have a small acquaintance that can also help you to know. Apostle Paul knew Christ and he wrote a lot about Christ. But he said that he wants to know, which means that there is more to know. We cannot know everything. There is always something to know, something to understand. Now, just think about this. Look at yourself. When you know something, when you have information concerning something, you realize that when you are going to talk about that thing, you talk with confidence. You talk with confidence. You can speak and speak well concerning whatever it is because you know. And I believe that that is one of the reasons why some of us are not able to witness, preach about Christ to others. Because we don't know much. So if Paul himself could say that I want to know, then I believe that all of us should make it a point to know as much as possible about Christ and be able to share Christ. When you want to know something, it may presuppose that you have a desire. You will not just get up want to know something without any form of desire. By all means, there, there will be a little glimpse of desire that you, because of that, you want to know. So, to know, you must have a desire. To know, you must be willing to pay the price to know. Most of you are students. Most of you are studying. And today, you are studying online. 
Why don't you stay home and sleep and just relax? But you still go online to listen to your teachers and your lecturers. Because you want to know. And that knowledge is towards something. You want to get a certificate at the end of a certain period. If you're a student, may God help you. Now, we don't even know how exams are going to be conducted. You don't know whether some people will write exams or not. Or we will just push all of them to go through. But all this is about knowing. It's about knowing. Now, when you desire to know something, it is likely that you will do everything possible to know. You want to know your subject well. You want to be well versed in your course. What do you do? Sleepless nights. You burn the midnight candle. You, you, you spend time to study. Because at the end of it, there is a certificate waiting for you. You are, you are desiring a certain certificate. So you will do everything that is possible for you to be able to get that certificate. If you want to have a certain... This is for the boys. You know where I'm going. When you have spotted a certain yes girl somewhere, and you 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 can you can describe the, the girl, and you desire that girl, like something desired a certain lady, and took his parents to go and chase that lady for him. When you desire that lady. You will go to every length to get that lady. You will call. You will send texts. You will rain or shine. You will go. You don't have money. You will borrow to take troll troll. And if you want to show, you know, make some, show that you are also there, you will go for Uber. And the Uber you go for, you will go for the air conditioned one. And go and show that, yeah, Charlie, you are also there. All because you desire to have this lady. But you see, if we can translate a little bit of this desire into knowing Christ, I believe that it will help us. Hallelujah. When you desire, you are willing to pay any price. So you are willing to go rain or shine. You are willing to go to lectures rain or shine because there is something at the end of the course that you are desiring. When you desire something, you, 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 you will spend money, you will spend time, you will do everything possible to be able to grab whatever has to be grabbed. You give that thing the necessary attention And the boys and the men. If you don't give attention to your ladies, will tell you you are not giving me attention. If you want to know her, if you desire to have her, you must give her attention. Shame. Attention. And in giving that attention, wanting to know Christ, wanting to know something, one thing that it will cost you is time. Friends, you can't give attention to anything without spending time on it. You cannot give attention to your studies. 
You cannot give attention to your, your, your word, the Bible, to Jesus, to whatever it is. Your girlfriend or your boyfriend without spending time. Without spending time. And sometimes we spend so much time with these relationships that it even costs us. It costs us something. Some of you even cost you relation, your relationship with your parents. But you shake your shoulders and say, uh, I don't care. Because of what you want. Time. Time. It will cost you time. And if you are not ready to spend time to get what you want, friend, forget about it. I read a book by a certain pastor called Greg Hinnant. He wrote a book called Walking in His Ways. And I'm going to use a passage. I'm going to quote from his book. For us to talk about time. If we want to know Christ. Paul said, I want to know him. And when you look at the life of Paul, you realize that he spent much time with the Lord. He spent much time in the presence of God. His thinking, his attention, every activity of his was on the things of God. Everything was on the things of God. So, if we also want to know God, if you also want to know Christ, especially in these times that we find ourselves, friend, things are changing in the world. By the end of the year, things are not going to be the way we used to know them. If we are released to come to church again, you will not come and find the sitting as it used to be. The sitting may be different. You may even get to the door and they will tell you, ask you, where is your mask? Now, the mask is going to be a part of our lives until God takes this wicked thing away. These days, if you are going to marry, they may ask you to bring six masks and six bottles of sanitizer. But God is good. He is able to deliver us. So, let's look at the issue of time. And I'm going to read from this man's book. He quoted Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. He says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Then he asks, he says, Let us consider then the purposes we give our time. Let's consider the purposes we give our time. We take time to eat, sleep, and work. I know a lot of you, because of the size of the food that you eat, it takes a lot of time. And some of you too are slow eaters. But we allocate time to eat, sleep, and work. Some of you are sleeping because you are not in school. You are spending time sleeping. My friend, wake up from your slumber and get something better to do with yourself. We take time for education. That is why you still go online to study. We make a location of time for education. That within a certain period, we must acquire certain certificates. We must acquire certain degrees. We take time for education. We take time for entertainment. Recreation. 
and relaxation. We are enjoying entertainment online. A lot of you are spending time on entertainment, watching movies, watching soap operas, watching all kinds of things. You are entertaining yourself. You are enjoying yourself. And some of you too are having your recreation and relaxations and entertainment and everything in your bedrooms under darkness. That is where you entertain yourself. May the Lord deliver you. We take time to examine, buy, and sell material goods needed for life in this world. This life, when you live in this life, at most, 120. 120 years seems a long time, but it will surely come to pass. We spend our lives chasing so many things for this short 120 years. And in the end, we leave them. Nobody takes any of the things that we acquire in these 120 years anywhere. We leave everything. If you look at what is going on in the world concerning COVID-19, in places where they can't even find uh, uh, um, graves to bury people, they put them in tipper tracks and tip them like sand. Human beings, they tip them like sand. So if you are going to spend all your time, your energy and everything to chase the things of this world and in the end you lose your life and you are tipped like sand, it doesn't make sense to me. We make time for all these things. We take time for births, we take time for deaths and marriages. Thank God that these days, ceremonies for death have been curtailed. We can spend time. Some people can even litigate on dead bodies for years. These dead bodies will be in the fridge while they are fighting for possession. Funerals, we will see who have the biggest crowd with all the encomiums. But today, we are limited to only 25 people. <laughs> so, how can you show off? All these things, COVID-19 has made all these things, it has made nonsense of all these things. It tells you that all these things are not necessary. Marriages, the way we celebrate marriages, weddings, and I know some of you are even planning. You have some wild ideas, some horses and chariots for your wedding. Some people are smiling at me. Great ideas. We have time. We plan these things. We spend time to plan them. And sometimes, unfortunately, after the wedding, even before you, the people come from the honeymoon, the marriage is dissolved. I read a story of a marriage which was dissolved on the first day of the honeymoon. This is a pastor who had the experience to deal with this. We spend time on all these things. We take time for special events, national and religious holidays. When it is holiday, we go to the beach, we spend time, and some of you have uh, 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 pool parties. Pool parties to see things and to do things. 
May Day. Yes, today May Day. I'm sure on May Day, some of you, I'm sure, went to the beach, went to certain places to enjoy yourselves. Spending time. We take time for church as we are doing now. This Sunday. And social activities. We take time for these things. But the writer asked, but amid all this careful allocation of time, where does God fit in? We have made time for all sorts of things. Where does God fit in? Where is our time for him? Where is our time for God? Sometimes we go through the whole day without spending even five minutes with God. We don't spend even a minute to read a verse from the Bible. How can we say that we want to know God? There is no way we can know God if we don't spend time with him. Jesus spent time with his father. Friend, if we want to know God and be able to Say what Paul said, I want to know him. Then we must make time for God. We must make time for God. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me. How many of us go to him every day? How many of us make an attempt to have fellowship with him and get to know him every morning even before we leave our rooms or our homes? How much time do we allocate to get to know our heavenly father. To get to know our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. The one who has made us what we are. How much time do we spend for him? Come to me. This morning did you come to him? Or did you go to him? Before joining us for this service. This is a corporate service. But the issue is you as an individual having time with him, spending time with him and getting to know him for yourself. You must have a personal relationship with your God. So that when you find yourself in any situation, you might not need to go to your pastor. You might not need to go to your elder. You might not need to go to anybody. But because you know your God, because you understand your God, because you know who he is and what he, stand, what, what he means to you, you are able to go to him directly and commune with him. That I may know him. You have to know your God. Is it unreasonable to take time for everything and everyone but God and yet expect to know God so closely that we possess the faith of Abraham? How can you know, how can you possess the faith of Abraham if you don't know God, if you don't know his word? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How can you be like Abraham, when you don't know the word of God, when you don't know God. How can you have wisdom like Joseph when you don't spend time with God? 
How can you be devoted like David? How can you have insights like Daniel? How can you have the courage of Nehemiah? And even the courage of David to face Goliath. When you don't spend time with your God. How can you have the love of Paul? His love for the things of God. That he will sacrifice everything. How can you have such a love? When you don't spend time with the one you say you love. Certainly it is. For such character traits thrive only in souls that give my time to God. The writer is saying that you can have these character traits only when you spend my time with God. Friend, how much time are you spending with God? If we are going to spend time with God, now is the time to do so. Behold, now is the accepted time. You can read 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2. If ever we are going to rise and seek the Lord first, morning by morning, now is the time to do so. If ever we are going to study the Bible, now is the time to do so. If ever we are going to pray without season, 1 Thessalonians 5.17, now is the time to do so. If ever we are going to become approved unto God, as it is written in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, and become that disciple that God is looking for. Now is the time to give ourselves holy, holy to the process of becoming till I come, give thyself holy. First Timothy 4, 13 and 15. If we are going to fit in that scripture, till I come, give thyself holy. Now is the time for us to spend time with our God. Now is the time to be at his feet. In Luke chapter 10 verse 39 when Jesus was a guest in the house of Mary and Martha the Bible tells us that Martha spent her time Dealing with the hustle and the bustle of life. The service. She wanted to give the best service. And so she was busy here and there doing all kinds of things. But the Bible tells us that Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. Mary spent time with Jesus and heard the word. Mary spent time with Jesus and heard the word. We are so preoccupied with what we will eat, what we will wear. We are preoccupied with what people say about us, people's opinion about us. You are wondering what people will say about your hair. So you must spend all the time that you can find to do your hair. You must spend all the time at the barber shop trimming your beard, trimming your mustache. You, know, you must spend all the time doing things that will make you appear acceptable in the presence of your friends. But we hardly forget that we have to do we forget that we have to do the same thing, spend time for our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ to accept us. He has accepted us already, but for 
us to be like beloved John, we must spend time with him. We must spend time with him. Friend, we can't go on like we used to do. It is about time we find time to know the Lord God that we have chosen to serve. How do you spend your time? How do you spend your time? What do you use your time for? What do you use your time for? We can spend time chatting with friends on social media. We can spend hours on social media. We can spend time in people's homes gossiping. without spending any any time with the Lord. Friend, if we want to experience the power of God, if we want to experience the intimate love of God, if we want to experience the Holy Ghost fire, if we want to see God manifest himself in our lives, then we must spend time with him. We must be at his feet, we must be in his bosom. Wherever we can be to spend time with him, we must be there. We must dive into the word. We must know who he is. We must know his character. We must know his nature. And as we get to know him, the better we'll be able to relate, relate with him. That I may know him. That I may know him. Paul told Timothy, till I come, give thyself holy. I'm praying that we can give ourselves, ourselves more and more to the Lord. Whatever has preoccupied your life, a day is coming that that thing, apart from God, will not count will not help you, will not do anything for you. What can help you is your intimate relationship with Jesus. This morning, I want to invite you to come to Jesus. Jesus is calling you to Come and have that intimate relationship with him. He wants you to come with everything that you have. Come. Spend that time. Enjoy fellowship with him. For some of us, fellowship with Jesus, fellowship with God, is like punishment. Until we are coerced or cajoled to do so, it never occurs to us to have fellowship on our own. I'm praying that today, by the end of this service, you will develop that love that will cause you, that will compel you to spend that time in his presence. If it were to be a boy-girl relationship, you'll be shaking like water in a bowl. You wouldn't want anything to disturb that relationship. But the most important relationship that you have, you are neglecting that relationship. Friend, don't neglect your relationship with Christ. Don't neglect your relationship with God. Spend more time to relate with your heavenly father. Spend more time to relate with your loving Jesus. 
For God so loved the world. God loves you. you your, your love must be reciprocal. We love material things. We love so many things. But our love for the Almighty, our Savior, our Redeemer, is nothing to write home about. If it had not been for his love, we wouldn't be here this morning to celebrate the communion. It was love that took him to the cross. The joy of seeing you and me redeemed, saved, healed, delivered. With that joy before him, he went to the cross. He gave up everything so that we can have that relationship. Why are we neglecting him? Why are we spending time on things that do not matter and not spending time with him? I pray that this morning you will change your mind. I pray that you will look again at the way you allocate your time and give Jesus a lot of time. Give God a lot of time. Give the word a lot of time. And give the Holy Spirit a lot of time in your life. And I believe that when you have done that, the blessing of the Lord will be upon you. You will be able to experience the power of God. That I may know him. That I may know him. May God help you. May God help us. To know him. Whatever we will have to do to know him. May God grant us that grace. To be able to do it. And know him. Study the word. Spend time in prayer. In worship. In praise. Anything that will draw us closer to him. To know him. May he help us. Grant us the grace to do that. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when we have known him. When we are coming to the Lord's table, as we are going to celebrate, we will understand what we are doing. He says, whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. When you know, then you can remember. And when you remember, it will cause you to worship. It will cause you to give praise. It will cause you to give thanks. You will not just walk and you will not just take the communion for com uh, uh, the, the sake of the ceremony. You will do it with understanding. You will do it with joy. You will do it with love. Remembering, knowing what Christ has done for you. May God help us to know him and draw closer to him in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I said amen. So before we Go to the Lord's table. Maybe this morning, under the sound of my voice, you've heard me. But you don't know Christ. You don't know Jesus. You've not taken Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Wherever you are, I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. I want, you to, I want to give you the opportunity to have that relationship with him which will be the beginning of your knowledge of him. Christ gave his life so that we, must have, we may have life. He died on the cross so that the penalty for our sins will be paid for. Sin will not have power and authority over us again. You want to accept the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. That you are a sinner. He has paid for the price. You want to pray a prayer like this. I want you to bow down your head and pray this prayer with me. Mean what you say 
And I believe that you will be saved today. You will be a child of God today. You will be born again to celebrate the communion. Father, I thank you for Jesus Christ. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that he took my place on the cross. Today, I confess that I'm a sinner. All this while, I've lived my life my own way. But today, Father, I ask that you forgive me and live the life of Jesus Christ through me. Wash me with that blood that he sacrificed on the cross for me. Make me clean, whole, and acceptable in your sight to God. Pray that, Lord, you will write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And help me to live for you every day. And one day when I leave this place, I will be with you in heaven. I thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you that as you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, May the hand of grace be upon your life. May the protective hand of God be upon you. May the Lord be with you in your going out and your coming in. May he help you to stand for him. May he help you to live that life that comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Spirit of God direct you in all your dealings on this earth. That you will not miss the way of the Lord. You will walk in the way of the Lord. That the Lord will be pleased with you all the days of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And now we want to come to the Lord's table. As we read, that Jesus said, anytime you do this, do it in remembrance of me. The Bible says that on that night, he took the bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples. Whatever that Jesus Christ went through for us, it was for our good. It was to make us happy people, joyful people, people who, who, who enjoy fellowship with him. Today, as we break this bread and take the wine representing the blood, we want to remember that sacrifice that broke the power of sin over our lives, that restored us, reconciled us to God, that we can have that joy of fellowship, that joy of relationship with him. We want to remember that. We want to remember that by his stripes, the suffering, the pain, the laceration on his body, we want to remember that it brought us healing. We want to remember that the blood that poured from his body, it brought us sanctification. And all these things culminated in our justification. We want to remember and to give thanks. So wherever you are, just bow down your head. As we prepare to share in the body and the blood, I want you to pray and give thanks. Thank God. For the cross. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for the sacrifice. I'm sure your bread and your wine is ready by your side. Father, we want to say thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for sanctification and thank you for justification all by the blood and by the body. Today as we celebrate 
we remember everything that Christ has done for us. Continue praying. Continue praying. Give thanks. At the cross I bow my knee. Give thanks Where unto the Lord. Blood was shed for me. There's no greater love than this. This is the body and the blood. You As we break the body, overcome the grave. We acknowledge that your body was broken for us. What can separate? You received all the stripes for our healing. As we take this body, let the stripes bring us healing according to your word. That by his stripes we are healed. Break your bread you have and take overcome it. the grave. Your glory fills the highest place. What can separate me now? This is the blood that was shed for us. As we take it, remember where your blood was shed for the pain. There's no great love for our salvation. And because of this blood, may evil pass over you. May COVID-19 pass over you. Because of this blood, you are protected from anything that the enemy throws at you. Because of this blood, you have received healing. Receive healing. Receive protection. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please take your wine. Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. When he has sacrificed everything, your deliverance, your healing, everything was settled. Your sins, my sins were forgiven. He could say it is finished. Because he had accomplished what he came to do. Father, this morning we say thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for grace. Even though we do not deserve it. But you did it for us. We appreciate it, oh God. We don't know how to thank you. It's more than we can carry. Thank you so much, Lord. And we pray for grace. Father, to be able to draw closer to you every day. Having enjoyed the body and the blood. Oh, Lord, may it draw us closer to you, oh God. In love, yes, in lovely fellowship with you, that we may know you more and more, oh God. Oh Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Maybe you want to give your tithe. You want to give your offering. You want to give your seed. Whatever you have for the Lord. As the way of giving is rolling on your screen. Just give to God. You want to say, the Lord, for what Christ did on the cross for me, I want to appreciate you. I want to give you the little that I have as a token of my appreciation. You also want to give because you want to help the church to continue to run. May God bless you. Don't say that um, I didn't come to church. I didn't sit in the church. So um, I can't give. Church is still running. The church needs our support. Give and you'll be blessed. I believe that you are giving. glory of the Lord is in your house. Appreciate. Appreciate God. With your seed, with your offering. And I believe God will be God in your life. We want to bring our service to a close. But before we close, I want you to talk to God. What you want God to do for you. Whatever help you need from God so that you can have a better relationship with Him. You can spend time with Him. For the next one minute, talk to God before we close. Say, Lord, I want to love you more. I want to know you better every day. I want to spend more time with you so that our love relationship will grow. And in that growth, I will experience your love, I will experience your joy, I will experience everything that I need to experience with you. Talk to God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for your love and care. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for Holy Spirit at work with us, drawing us closer to you every day that we may know you that we may know you. We know that when we get to know you, our lives will never be the same. May we know you so that our lives will bring honor to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance over your life and give you peace. As we sing our closing anthem. Stand, stand up, stand up for Jesus. You are not going out there the same. You are going out there to lift up the banner of Jesus Christ. And you are going out there with knowledge and understanding.
because you know him. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you all. God bless you.